2018 has been a very significant year for O2, thanks to the acquisition of a large chunk of 4G as well as 5G spectrum, with the resultant significant capacity upgrades that could be deployed as a result of that. This has led to a significant re-architecture in a lot of areas in order to massively uplift the customer experience, which is what I'll be focusing on today with also mentioning of a range of identification strategies that O2 have deployed as well, like a variety of small cell approaches. All the way back in April of 2018, O2 acquired 40 MHz of 2300 MHz spectrum in the Ofcom spectrum auction process. They also acquired a chunk of 5G spectrum as well, however as that's not been deployed yet I am not going to specifically cover it. Immediately, tens of sites, roughly 60 sites, went live with 2300 MHz, predominantly or exclusively within the M25 e.g. London, which is to be expected given the density of customers in that area. But since then, the 2300 MHz has been deployed onto hundreds of sites around the country, expanding well outside of London into places like Leeds, Sheffield, Hull, Leicester, Nottingham and so on. There are even some in some relatively rural locations as well. Typically these sites so far have one 20 MHz carrier of 2300 MHz rather than the full 40 MHz but some are broadcasting the full 40 MHz of 2300 MHz spectrum so EAR FCNs 39250 and 39448. In the case of a typical Ericsson macro site this involves the use of Ericsson ERS-8808 remote radios, which are 8 transmit, 8 receive. Typically, these sites also get a major Ericsson radio system upgrade for the FDD band as well. So L21 gets moved onto a pair of Ericsson radio systems per sector, so that then enables 4x4 L21. Then on sites where Vodafone require L26, O2 also deploys an ERS for their L26. And the LOA often gets moved on to ERS as well. Antenna-wise, these use Huawei 8-port antennas for the FDD broadcasts and Huawei 16 RF port antennas for the 2300 and future capability of N78 5G as well. In the case of Ericsson Streetworks poles in the O2 region, they get swapped out from being like single stack Jupiters to Alaras with a cube shaped base to them. These have Huawei quad band antennas with four low ports and four high ports each. The poles also have GPS antennas in the top sticking out a little bit for the TDD time signal. The sites also gain a Lancaster cabinet alongside their RBS 6102s. The Lancaster will then contain the Ericsson radio system remote radios that will then provide for the additional and upgraded frequencies. To get all this to work with quad band antennas, quadruplexes are used on the high ports. Now to talk about the O2 Nokia regions. These use Nokia's FZNJ 44R remote radios for the 2300 MHz. On London sites, the 2300 MHz is fed in through the four high ultra wideband ports on the back of their Comscope 104 antenna, which also provides dual beam 18 and 2100 MHz on each sector and single beam Geo9 alongside the dual beam low band antenna which has the dual beams of U09 and L08. So these sites have six sectors U09, L08, L18 and L21 alongside three sectors of 44R, L23 and three sectors of Geo9. So this is pretty much O2's London build now. 
on sites that are getting upgraded and unwound, which permits a massive capacity upgrade over what was typically there before, which varied from anything like L08 and L18 all the way up to sites with, say, six sector U21, but without 4G at all, for example. So these are the sites that you get the really high speeds on in London, and it's generally fairly noticeable at the moment when you happen to fall off one onto a older standard site. Also, while talking about Nokia and London, one of the sites got one of its sectors upgraded to have a Nokia AANA massive MIMO panel for 2300 MHz instead of the Epsilon NJ 4T4R remote radio. So, as I described in that video, the massive MIMO installation provides a significant capacity boost to the area over what the conventional 4T4R remote radio would have done. And it's great to see massive MIMO being used by another operator in the UK. Now to move outside of London in terms of the O2 Nokia regions. The Streetworks pole upgrades are fairly similar to the Ericsson zone I spoke about previously. So a single stack Jupiter gets swapped for an Alara pole featuring the quad band Huawei antennas again. The difference is in this case that the radios are Nokia and the cabinets are all Nokia-esque cabinets. So actually, all of the cabinets on these are Lancasters because Lancasters traditionally housed Nokia equipment. The difference is that either one of the Lancasters gets reshelled and gets converted into a new Lancaster with a side pod to house more equipment, or a new Lancaster with a side pod gets added onto the existing collection of Lancaster cabinets. I have a picture at the bottom right of this slide showing the inside of one of these highly featured Lancaster cabinets with side pod and you can see in the side pod on the right of the cabinet there are the FZNJ 2300 megahertz remote radios. Meanwhile for the FDD technologies there are also the range of Nokia radios in the rest of the cabinet such as for 800 MHz on the bottom left and then various 2100 MHz and 1800 MHz radios in the middle section with the 900 MHz still being fed through one of the other Lancasters. Much like with the Ericsson sites as well, these get a 2100 MHz upgrade in the form of additional radios for L21 as well. There are also quadruplexers at the top middle and top left of the Lancaster cabinet which functions in much the same way as in the Ericsson example so the quadruplex are for 18, 21, 23 and 26 hundred megahertz combining. In terms of conventional macro sites gaining O2 2300 megahertz I have only come across very few so it's hard to know exactly what the strategy going forward into 2019 will be exactly, but they give a pretty good clue. So the first example comes from Chris, and in this case, the Huawei 16 RF4 antennas have been added alongside the existing Amphenol antennas for the 2300 MHz ad. So in some ways, it's a little bit like the Ericsson traditional macro upgrade as far as the Huawei. 16 port antennas are concerned. However, because this is using FZNJ remote radios for 2300, only four of the RF ports for 2300 are being used on the Huawei antennas. The remaining ports on the higher, so like N78 port range, also not being used because that upgrade will happen in future. The future 5G on these Nokia sites will probably be through the use of Nokia's ATAR AZQF N78 remote radio units. In the second upgrade case that I've seen, they are using just quad band antennas and diplexing in the 2300 MHz alongside the 18 and 21 and 21 feeders. As in the Ericsson zone, the 2100 MHz radios are doubled up. 
in order to provide the configuration required to run the 4G 2100 MHz for both operators and also possibly, probably for 44R in the future as well. Outside of O2 host regions, O2 has also gained L21 as well as L18 in places like Manchester, Liverpool and Birmingham deployed in those areas on the Vodafone host equipment. The final physical currently existing hardware topics that I will talk about are regarding O2's small cell deployments in 2018. The first of these is the use of spider cloud small cells in Mitchell's and Butler pubs. So these are little 1800 MHz small cells about the size of Wi-Fi access points that broadcast O2's 1800 MHz 4G in order to provide capacity offload in those areas because obviously pubs and bars and the like will often have quite a lot of people inside and the buildings are very good at attenuating signal. So small cells inside are a great idea to offload all those cell edge users. These are very popular within that pub chain as well, having been seen in a whole array of their pubs in London and rumours of their presence in quite a number of other locations outside of London as well. The next densification strategies I have only come across in London this year. So the first is Nokia small cells being used in inner city urban London. So these are installed on either existing lamp posts or new posts are provided. And typically these posts have a mesh backhaul node at the top of them with then a Cisco Wi-Fi access point below and then the Nokia L18 small cell at the lowest level of the equipment. And so these provide O2 Wi-Fi as well as the L18 as well. And the performance on both is actually quite good, especially if you appear on the weekend when a lot of the inner city business areas where these are installed are mostly devoid of people, at least compared to how they would be on a work day. And now for the final item of this collection, and that is the O2 four box microcell deployments in London. So these are quite often on McDonald's signage alongside other various retailers signage and there are four boxes which basically four antennas to support the quite large number of bands that O2 deploy on these. So U09, L08, L18 and L21 is not uncommon so clearly that's quite a lot of capacity for a microcell and clearly those are the bands that up until the 2300 MHz would have been on your highest capacity macro sites as well. So clearly these do make a very big difference in the really busy shopping streets uh, to which they are deployed. And some final last matters of business. It was recently announced that O2 would be trialling Huawei equipment on 200 of their sites in London by replacing the Nokia equipment with Huawei. This represents probably into the double digits of their sites in London, so it is quite a major trial in terms of numbers. And it could either add weight to the suggestion that Nokia's equipment is perhaps a little bit behind Huawei's, especially in terms of 5G and the displeasure, I guess, from O2 thereof. However, it could also be something as simple as like a bluff to appear very keen in Huawei's products in order to potentially, for example, get better prices of Nokia, much as kind of bargaining at a retail store can kind of go. O2 also started doing 4G roaming in the year as well, much like 3, and they have actually quite a surprising number of countries supported as well, so they've been very busy working away with that. 
Much like in the 3 video, I am also going to talk a little bit about parameters. Specifically, it would be nice to have more checking of RSRP in Zip6 and Zip7. And also, while there is de-boosting and a 3 dB reduction on 4TX sites, there is no change in the mobility border, such as adding 6 dB. So thanks for watching this video about O2's developments in the year 2018. I hope you've enjoyed it. And the final video of this series is in production, the Vodafone video, and it will be featuring Jake in some parts of it as well. However, I'm going to Berlin probably by the time that this video has uploaded, so it will be a few days, a week or so before that gets uploaded.